Welcome to the American Woods Shop. I'm Scott Phillips. And I'm Barry Todd. And today we're going to delve into the world of turning. And you just won't believe what you're about to see, so stay with us. The American Wood Shop with Scott Phillips is brought to you by Woodcraft. Since 1928, providing traditional and modern woodworking tools and supplies to generations of craftsmen. Woodcraft, helping you make wood work. Pro Tools for Tool Pros. Rikon Tools. Woodcraft Magazine. Projects, plans, and web links designed to help you make wood work. P.S. Wood, home of Timberwolf Swedish Silicon Steel bandsaw blades and super sharp scroll saw blades. A bed to sleep on. A table to share meals. A house that feels like a home. The Furniture Bank of Central Ohio. Providing furniture to neighbors in need. Right here, ladies and gentlemen, this man is my favorite wood turner, and here's why. You know, action speaks louder than words. Look at this. It's a turn box, and he called this Shades of Tiffany. How long ago did you make this? That was about four years ago. And on life's turning journey, it evolved to him to this piece and describe the various woods that you used, because all of this is wood. It's all wood. Okay. The base is uh, maple. It's a very unusual type of maple. Uh, came from what was called a noggin. That a friend of mine told me what it was. <laughs> and the rest of it is poplar. Beautiful, painted to perfection. And look at the shade, because this is poplar that's been painted. And what did you do to get this glass effect? Well, I mix a uh, translucent white paint with uh, my finish that I make. Oh, and wow. a little tiny brush and a lot of tedious hours and got it all filled in. So can you imagine what a gift this would make to someone? A beautiful stippling job on the top of this. And then again, that's maple noggin from hard maple. Yep. Okay. And then turning wise, what we're going to have him give us some pointers on, he likes to make decorative ornaments and these are hollow. Yep. And describe that process for us. Well, it's just a matter of mounting a piece of uh, just scrap wood. That's how I get rid of most of my scraps in the shop. Just a block, uh, basic rounding it off. Okay. And then just form the shape you want right. of the ornament. Okay. And then drill it out. Okay and then hollow it out. Okay. And well, once it's hollowed out, you cut it off. And of course, in your spare time, turn a uh, finial and a top, put them together, wow. and you have Christmas ornament. Okay, so it goes like this, mm -hmm. and then it goes like this. A little spot of glue. And he uses cut off shanks of fish hooks. Yeah and those are super glued in and you're done. Yeah. Okay, well, I have to see some turning, so let's head over to the wood lay. Sure thing. Barry Todd teaches around the world, and in Greece, someone drew this up, and they all named him, after his demos, the alchemist, because he turns worthless things into gold. So you're using scraps right now, yeah. and you have this set up on a chuck. Right. Remember to read, understand, and follow all the instructions that come with the tools and products you use in the wood shop work safely. Thus, safety Absolutely. shield, face shield, no rings, no jewelry. What other tips do you have? Okay, as far as turning this piece, hollowing it out, uh, it's already been drilled, it's ready to start. I like to turn in reverse. Okay. Because it's easier to know that I'm facing directly into the side that I want to take the word out of. There Norm you go again, being normally, different. Yeah. Normally you'd be doing it like that. Exactly. This is so much easier to control this way. And you can see it. Yeah. Seeing's and believing. I'm turning this on, okay, and it's <laughs> I was just going to make one more point, is when you're turning in reverse, you got to make sure to tighten the set screws, because you don't want this thing backing out onto you. Exactly. It's no fun. I get it. And it's rolling at 400 RPM. Yeah. I like to turn slowly in reverse. And I take the tool in at about a 45 degree angle. This way I get a smoother and a uh, better shear cut. And just feel my way in until you start seeing shavings walking back down the tool. 
just like that. Now this is contrary to just about whatever turning you've ever yep. seen before. Absolutely. Have it spinning in the opposite direction. But I like what you're doing because look at the shavings coming right out of that chisel. Mm -hmm. And you have complete control of that and you can see yeah. it. And That's also excellent. with this way, when the, two, when the chips are backing out, you don't have so much cleaning in and out of there. Sure. You will eventually want to clear that out with either a small stick or vacuum. Gotcha. So he'll hollow this on down. How thick do you like the side walls to be? It depends on the wood. If it's a heavier wood, uh, I like to get as thin as I can. Gotcha. Something like this, which is flame box elder, uh, eighth of an inch, quarter okay. of an inch even. Okay. Go back in, ease it in. You don't want to take it in too fast. And once you hit there, as soon as you start feeling biting, just take it easy. I think we're about ready to part it off. Okay. That's good enough. That sounds good. So whenever you move the tool rest, you turn it off. Yep. And you don't want that tool rest and the banjo getting your hands in a dangerous position no. when it's spinning. I've seen that happen at pro workshops before, and it's not something you want to do. No, no. Don't get in that big of it's a hurry. It's not going to be a good result. Nope. So now we got that in position, okay. and you're going to open up the cut a bit, so then you can use your parting tool. Absolutely. That's okay. all we're doing. Very good. And now, with it spinning towards you this time, and you'll do it conventionally. Increase the speed. How fast do you want to go? Uh, I'm just doing about 1,100 right now. Perfect. In turning, it's mesmerizing. Why do people turn? I will argue that it's because they just can't wait to release that inner beauty that only the wood knows that it has. It's always a surprise. Why do you like to turn, Barry? It's relaxing. It is. Uh, I mean, it's a great way of uh, just letting your inner creative spirit, or whatever you want to call it, come out and have fun. And we almost have it. There we go. And ladies and gentlemen, there is how that nice graceful form comes to life. Nice and light. And look at the red flame of that box elder. That's gorgeous. You'll finish on that and that'll just glow. Well, Barry Todd, thank you for the inspiration through the years and the wonderful turnings. Thanks, Keep Scott. them coming. I appreciate it. Okay, we'll try. now, Susie has challenged me to make a lamp for the ages, and I'm up to it using resin and cast materials. Let's get to that. I like to make all the things that we have in our home, and lamps are no exception, and this is a river cast infused tube that's turned, and to make that, you end up making something that looks a lot like that. Okay, and I put a bit of dye, just two drops colored this, and we're going to turn this in just a second, but I want to show you how to make that, and that's cured out now for four days. Give it plenty of time. And what you do is you drill a hole through your base piece and counterbore it with a Forstner bit so the nut goes flush, so that will mount to the bottom of the lamp base. This is just a section of tube that's cut long enough with a razor saw to do this. Now we won't put the tube in just yet, but you have to be able to nut it so it draws everything tight together. And that's a perfect fit. The length of all of this is determined about where the threads are on the lamp rod. Crystal clear, right? Okay, now here's what we're going to do, and this is key. If you do castings, you have to use pure silicone. Put a nice bead, healthy bead, in the bottom of this recess, like so. And this will not be seen. And then on the outside, all the way around, and this will get turned off, you want a good healthy bead of clear silicone, because if you don't, when you pour the resin in here, you're gonna have a royal mess on your hands. 
And this does look messy, but that's what you want. And unfortunately, that's going to take quite a bit of time to cure. So now I'm going to insert this rod all the way through again, like so. And now I'm going to put the acrylic tube that's going to hold the lighting, the LED strip light, in the middle right there. And then this would go back on after we've done the casting. We don't put this on until we fill this halfway full of river cast, two parts of the resin, one part of the curing agent, mix thoroughly, and you pour it into this tube halfway full, and once it's halfway full, you put your decorative juniper, this is what they burned before the Sherpas go up Mount Everest, so this is gonna look really cool. And then I would throw in some mother of pearl and various things to decorate it up. Now in the interest of saving time, we already have this one ready. Let's go turn this. I'm putting the casting that the total assembly is just a little more than 18 inches long onto what's called a screw chuck. This is a threaded screw, goes into a 7 16 inch diameter pilot hole and that cuts threads and that screw post is held in place by the four jaws of this four jaw chuck. And you bring it up nice and tight until you can't spin it anymore. That's right there. And then down on this end, you advance the live ball bearing center, make sure it's locked, the tailstock is locked, into the center point of this disc. Now this is out of square because it definitely was blown out by the gases it cured, but we're gonna work with this. So the first thing I'm going to do is bring up the tool rest to this disc, and I'm going to turn this down. This is gonna look weird on camera, but I'm going to use this roughing gouge and staying out of the plane of the rotation because those pieces that come off can f go flying. So that looks really good. Everything's locked and locked and locked and locked. We're good. And that's going at about 1,000 RPM. Let's see what we can do here. I want to just take that on down. The key to this is taking light cuts. Do not jam that chisel into the voids. A roughing gouge is a great tool for this. Notice how I have it angled down so that I'm rubbing the bevel to the wood as I'm making the cut. That's called a shearing cut. And I'll just work this right on down. Get it nice and balanced. Okay, the roughing gouge is used on the whole length of this workpiece, and I'm going to continue to take down this end piece of mahogany. You see that red shaving? And getting down to the resin. Remember, there's a acrylic or polycarbonate tube cast in the middle of this to give it strength. Okay, and now I'm going to go to the half inch bull, B-O-W-L, gouge, and rub the bevel and, and raise the handle until the bevel and the cutting edge produce shavings at the, that honestly gives you the best, smoothest cut you can hope for. But I will tell you one thing that I did that was a bit ill-conceived. I threw some stones that were decorative in here as well, let's see what we've got. Yeah, there's that void I was afraid of when the gas is expanded out, but I think we'll still be okay to turn this down and once this is turned into form, then we can polish this. The form is all shaved down now and on the bottom, I have to make that flat so that we can join this. Remember, this is the base, that's the top to the base pieces, and I'm using that 
point to go in nice and fine, but also to undercut this slightly so that when I marry this piece to the two discs that join the base, it will all come together beautifully. And this is the point where it gets a little dicey because now I'm going to back this off. That's held on by the screw chuck, but it always needs to be supported on this sem by something. So I'm going to back this ram back and take out the live ball bearing center, store it, and I'll bring up a Forstner bit, one inch in diameter. That hole was slightly larger in there. And you go, what the heck is going on? Well, we have to drill this out and I want that point just touching it ever so slightly to help secure it to where it comes off and now I can bring that up to speed and I want to start out around 200 with a Forstner bit like this. And we go all the way in to the center. Remember there's an acrylic tube in there. And let's see what happens, nice and slow. I'm all the way through. Okay, the key is get the speed down, that's perfect. And I'll back this off and look at the end. You can see it's hollow all the way up to the top. And that way we can put the stem through for the light above the LED, but we can also insert the LED strip lights. Now, over to the bandsaw, and I just buffed a little bit of clear polyurethane on top of that resin, and it really brought it out. Wait until the lights go on, inside and out, over to the bandsaw. I need two more pieces to complete the lamp. I need a walnut base, and that's got flame figure in it. That's walnut, and that's 12 and a half inches in diameter, just shy of two inches thick. And then this is the best grain right here, old heart, hard maple. And we'll cut that out using a quarter inch six tooth blade. And for the good cut, I'm using silicon steel and you just can't beat the way it melts through wood, especially hard maple. I'll stay on the outside edge of the line, then it's over to the wood lathe to turn these two into final form. Okay, taking that hard piece of maple into a finished form. I go in, establish a shoulder, and then with a good sharp chisel, taking a light cut, I make the outside round. And maybe I can't do it all in the first pass, but give that chisel time to cut. And that's a good cut right there. One more pass, this is bone dry wood. There we go. That's the round form that I'm looking for. And I'll round over the edge slightly and do some sanding, drill a small hole, finish it, and then it's on to the walnut. never grows perfectly. And this is a major bark inclusion, which a lot of people say, well, can't use that. Now watch what happens. This is the accelerator. It would cure on its own, but watch closely. See, it crystallized almost instantly. And it sets off a chemical reaction, a catalytic reaction that makes that glue cure out rapidly and see it crystallize just then, boom, just like that. Now this is a mistake most turners make once, and that is they go, oh, it's cured. And so they go ahead and they turn it on, not knowing that there's still uncured glue in there 
and it will splatter all over in a 360 degree arc. So till tomorrow then, we're gonna let this cure overnight and then we're going to come back, turn this, and then you'll see the lamp come together. I'm using a six inch diameter face plate. Now to ease over this edge and there are a couple problems here. One of them is there's a broken out area that I can hear chattering right now and that needs to go away. That's the very pith or the very heart of the tree. And I need to roll this around to get rid of that area. And then a bit of sanding, a bit of finishing, and I think we'll have it. Let's take a look, see what we have. It seemed to go well. Oh yeah. Okay, there's that inclusion that was glued. And there's that area that looks good to me. Cleaned it up nicely. I'm not gonna to try to make it perfect. So I'm just gonna smooth this out just a bit and then sand and finish and then it's on to putting together the part. This is that diamond point carbide negative rake cutter. They call it dynamite. Look at this. <laughs> That's bone dry walnut. Look at those ribbons just floating away. Oh, now that's what makes life fun right there. That's great. Now it's on to sanding, finishing, and assembly. Wow, that's gorgeous. In the bottom of the maple turning, you can see I counterboard a hole that I could run the wires through that go through that tube in the middle of that casting. And let me, before this gets damaged, draw that tight and make everything come together the way it needs to. This just clips in. And this is called a lamp kit. You can order these a bunch of different places. This is a 12 inch tall harp. And now that it's wired, I'm going to plug it in. Never do that plugged in. And here we can tell we've got some power. And now let's check this out. One, two, three, three way. And we can put the shade on it. And that's looking pretty cool. Now let's do the LED strip that's in the center. And what you do on the lamp pipe, you use this LED tape and a little bit of electrician's tape, this one's green, and you work it around the rod and that is inside there. And I've used this before and it works great. Let's turn that on and voila. So to really show that off, I'm going to pull this whole assembly apart and then mount it to this, this turning. This hole was drilled at, at the drill press. Make sure you have that three inch bit set at the lowest speed setting and just have fun. Watch those shavings, it's magic. So I'll put all this together and then we'll have the final reveal. Here's the final reveal. And the wild thing about this, I have a remote that I can change the colors of the lamp just by using that push button or go back to natural light. And this imparts such a cool feeling in any room. And of course I added the disco ball up above. Why not? Whatever you do, learn to express yourself in your wood shop and make your own things. And I hope you've enjoyed this show and it inspires you to make your own style of lamp, whatever it is. Now next week is a beautiful cabinet made with a vintage piece of art glass, so don't miss that. See ya. Woodcraft, since 1928.
providing traditional and modern woodworking tools and supplies to generations of craftsmen. Woodcraft, helping you make wood work. Pro Tools, for tool pros. Rikon Tools. Woodcraft Magazine. Projects, plans, and web links designed to help you make wood work. P.S. Wood, home of Timberwolf Swedish Silicon Steel bandsaw blades and super sharp scroll saw blades. A bed to sleep on. A table to share meals. A house that feels like a home. The Furniture Bank of Central Ohio. Providing furniture to neighbors in need. For more information on tips behind the American Woodshop and watch free episodes 24-7, check us out online and like us on Facebook.